Blessings and welcome forward to Reasonings right here at the Tree of Life. I'm your host, the Great Owl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect love. Perfect love. Most blissful and awesome greetings, you know, to all our patrons and our subscribers, viewers, and those who find the channel by a mystic power of Yud Hey Fav Hey. Because most times that's why I hear most people who have sent me a message, I don't know if it's the same for you, they say they had a prior, they prayed about something, they're asking about something and they weren't subscribed, they never heard about the channel and somehow <laughs> we just popped up in their notification and I've been hearing this for five years. And so I'm sure it's been at least over 250 people who have told me this. So I see that it's a pattern. So why am I saying it this way? I have to give God thanks. I have to give God thanks for the people who listen to a word that came through the Most High, you know, through us on this channel to come through their notification, Brother Singh, and they clicked on it and they were able to learn something, look back into them, into themselves, into the experience they've been having, their experience of the faith, their experience of life, and certainly how they have viewed God. Many people probably would have viewed God as religion and if sometimes you do not separate it for them with good reasoning, they don't readily understand that they have conflated. And conflate just means that you've brought it all into one. And you, you, when you talk about religion, what's bad in religion, they attach it to God, right? And they assume things that religion say about God that really isn't about God. But it's just what has been religiously viewed what's been codified in behaviors, but it really, hallelujah, has nothing to do with God or godliness. And so why is that very important? Because currently, this offering will be on how the enemy controls our thoughts, or how the enemy interferes with our natural thinking processes. And just as I laid it out there, you have many people who they are so religious that they're they're not righteous. They are so heavenly minded they're no earthly good. They are so consumed by the didactic assimilation of information, i.e., supposed morality and ethics, that they have no compassion, no understanding, and no love. And so the thought processes that they are working with, though seemingly religious, aren't righteous. Who controls their thoughts, Brother Singh? That is my question because, as I, as I was saying off here, and I can bring you know, the audience into the reasoning, we can talk about a man's belief system as a sign of goodness, but is, it, is that how we define goodness? Isn't it by their works, by their fruits we define goodness? So it is actually outcomes and behaviors, you know, not philosophies, right? So a person can say they're good all they want, but are their activities good? So then here we go back to the point. Who is leading their thoughts to think the ways that they're thinking religiously but not righteously to put people into boxes to not care about people to really not offer any form of cognitive responses to the hurt and the suffering in the emotions and the lifestyles of actual individuals but you beat them down with fear mongering and worrying and judgments but righteousness like not to the good samaritan it's about compassion, it's about love, it's about sharing the goodness of God, kindness, being able to go past our own misunderstanding or the, the wrong experiences or the bad experiences we've had to seek the higher calling. So whose thoughts are guiding the minds of individuals to be self-destructive, disrespectful of parents, community members, disrespectful of the entire process and the experience and the understanding of life. They're so withdrawn, annihilistic, self-absorbed. Who is really causing individuals to think this way? Is it just themselves, Brother Singh, or are they being influenced by some greater enemy, Brother Singh? Yes, Brother Great all how the enemy control your mind, you know? But I said it starts with the culture. Growing up, we learn bad habits from our parents, our siblings, our friends, our environment, 
a culture, you know? Bad habits, what is norm. So we have a bad mind culture. And it is the norm. But it's a bad habit for we are teach with children. Because if somebody bad mind, you know, naturally the baby is just going, going to do what the parents do. Hallelujah. Them see them parents bad minds, them learn it. Yes. Because the whole are we born innocent, you know. Hallelujah. But we learn things of the world. So at first a culture, surroundings, it a go build with mind. And then you have the TV, you know. Mm -hmm. Period. You know? Um, the, the TV program, radio program, the internet, phones, yes. scrolling social media. Even social media. Oh, it's so horrible. That's why you, you see, me not even post on social media anymore. I know. Because we just we can't take the social media and the things that it are pushing in she front she of me. It will just push. A life killing in front of my face, you know? Mm. Somebody getting murdered in front of my face. Oh, I know that, brother. For real. I don't want to see that. I want to think about God. I want to think about the goodness of God. I want to just live a good life today. Just I try to do my best today. Yes. I don't want to see murder. I mm -hmm. don't want to see man a rob man in a store mm -hmm. and a shoot off of each other. Only for shooting, mass shooting. Holy up a naked girl, you know, pornography. I don't want to see that. My mind wants to stay up on the most side. Hallelujah. You know, social media are good for share out your thoughts and the most side thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. It's good for do certain things for make you share your light to the world. Yes. You know? But you have to be careful it will share the darkness in your mind because you just have scroll. And you say, receive, receive. Mm -hmm. Everything you see, just absorb, absorb, absorb. It will become part of your mind. Once you see something, you know, you cannot not see it. Uh, Once you know something, you cannot not know it. <laughs> you know, unless the most I intervene. You see me? True, true, true. So we have to careful the things we absorb on a daily basis. Before, we have internet and TV and radios. Our absorption level was very low. It was mostly storytelling and book reading. Yes. You know? A mass gatherings. Yeah. yeah. Communal gatherings. Ceremonial days and such. Yeah. yeah. No a man can just scroll up on the, the social media and type in anything they want to know and them know it. You know? And the things why it feed you at daytime. Cause me find my if I go up on the social media, sometimes I find myself just a scroll. <laughs> I just go down. Half an hour pass. <laughs> yeah. One hour pass. Yeah. I was like, you know, put yeah. it down. What's happening? Yes. yes. Because be entertaining thing on the phone, you know. Yes, yes. It's so captivating. Yes, sorry, Baba. You know, things make you laugh mm -hmm. till you till your belly hurt, till you laugh, till you roll on the ground. I have to admit that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, many yeah. distractions yeah. they on the phone. Yes. And we absorb it. Every single day, hours upon hours upon hours. <laughs> well, you know, brother Singh, you said it, you know, the cultural indoctrination, uh, enculturalization, uh, socialization. All three sounding big, it just means that habits and behavior of mass groupings, of family becoming communities, of communities becoming nations, of nations becoming regions, of regions becoming the world, codified, stamped, approved over a lifetime. So, you know, the Indians behave this way of Calcutta, right? Yeah, the Indians behave this way in, in, um, in the Kashmir region. The Indians of South Asia behave this way, right? And the Chinese behave this way. So you have these environmental factors which come into culture. And so why am I laying it out? I'm one of those persons who love to show people the context in which things are. Things are never just a dot by itself. It is happening amidst other things. We are a place amongst places, not just a place that is of itself. And so the influences of our environments, the belief systems, and the ways of life naturally 
impressed, as you say, upon the innocent, our culture and culturalization coming from our nativity, you know, the native, our mothers and fathers, ways of life. If the traditions are for nature, for God, as it was given through the Adamite. And these are codified now in belief systems, what we're talking autonomously to the nativity. That's why I've, I've codified these things. I can't be anything else but myself, as I was saying to you. These are understandings we must hold. So the native, the native way of looking at things is a God-centered way because it connects man, nature, its creator, to behaviors, to outcomes called morality and ethics. And so those who influence morality and ethics obviously influence outcome and behavior. If morality and ethics is rooted in foundations of tradition, God-given traditions, then they are of the greatest benefit for the development and the actualization of the individual soul, community, nation, community, family, nation. However, because life has been so long, the kingdom of darkness has been wrought with it the true children of light, children of the most light, for eons, as we have come to know historically, we have inherited incursions, intervenience, contravenience into behavior. And so these contravenience come as belief system that add addendum, um, put attachments to original statements, do amendments and such and such to other statements, abridge statements, edit statements, edit the original text, edit the state of thinking, edit the traditional view, edit the original autonomous way of life. I'm saying it in all that terms to mean one thing. Whose way of life are you following? Whose way of thinking are we following? Whose centered way of thought are we following? Are we following a disoriented central view that is about individualism? about separation from your family, your community, your nation, your God, to self, to do as thou will, to displease, distrust, dishonor, dismember, disorient, disorganize for your sense of power, then that's who's controlling your thoughts. And so notice I've not yet spoken specifically about the thought. I'm speaking about the thought process and who's influencing it. Good people are influenced by God, who is goodness, hallelujah. And people who are codified as evil people are influenced by Lucifer, the fallen seraphim, who is unto darkness and unto, hallelujah, lies and deception for the sake of power, existence, operation, presence, behavior. So let's go into behaviors. When a person truly sees you and accuses you without knowing anything about you, that's not a right spirit. Now, even a person going and say, well, I am a child of God and, and, and I can see you're a devil. Has that person offended you? What has that person done? Have you known directly that that person has attacked you, attacked someone in your presence? No. So why is it that you should do that? Is it for a seeking of power? Is it a sense of showing yourself important? The good soul has a tendency to do what? Forgive. 70, hallelujah, times 7. Mm -hmm. It's not that good people are stupid. It's the nature of not trying to destroy and you yourself becoming evil and tender unto wickedness, mm. self-righteousness. That's why you do it. So yes, I did see this person and they have a dark force on them. Goodness in me, first thing I thought, oh my God, what a poor soul, hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Judgment, the evil thought says, a dirty drunk or that, a long time, if you happen to that dog there, you think I look at people and do this too? Evil thoughts come from evil. They don't come from God. Self-righteous thoughts don't come from God. People think unto evil, think unto desire, unto pleasure. Who is influencing pleasure? Who is gaining from your displeasure? You expose yourself to a great orgy. They got pictures, they got video images of you in this orgy. You're 21. You're going to be 28 someday, you're going to be married, and you're going to have kids. And not everybody's going to have money to sue a porn site to take the images down. Hallelujah. Not everybody's going to have the ability to get a court order to remove that. So being led by a lustful thought coming from the devil, doing an act that 
probably happened a few times. Let's be honest, I'm not going to say it happened once, but maybe it happened once. Mm -hmm. I'm not self-righteous, right? Maybe it happened once, hallelujah. But maybe it happened several times. But that one occasion will now define the rest of your life because you've allowed evil thoughts, the enemy, to influence your behavior. It's telling you it's okay. Dwayne and Jane and Rita and Peter and everybody, they all do it. And look at how their standards in life are. They are the most powerful, famous people that you'll see on every network, everywhere. And so what? I'm no different. Why should I think I'm better than them? Right? So why can't I go, ooh, la, and ooh, I'm bouncing and rubbing up against the same sex, right? You see how the devil comes in and begins to lie and tell them that, oh, by the way, you, you know, you can be anything you want to be. And they start believing that. Because they, 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 the, the real way of reality is too much. The, the masculine and the feminine as they are is too much. They want to switch it up. So rather sing, they, they want to go on a midnight ride on the other side, you know. <laughs> and they, they think it's okay. They think, you know, I'm thinking my own thoughts. This is my own mind. Mm -hmm. I'm making my own decision. I wonder why when they do return to their senses in the midst of all that suffering, they're crying out and saying, I didn't want this, hallelujah. I didn't want this. Because it suggests to me where they start out and where they end up is two different places. So you might think talking back to your parents right now is cute because something inside of you is giving you that, that fuel, that fire to be quick-witted with your mouth, right? But you're being disrespectful to your parents, you're being disrespectful to your teachers, you're being disrespectful to your elders, and you're like, well, they were being disrespectful to me. But why did you assume they were being disrespectful? Why didn't you assume that they were trying to, from their level of understanding, try to make you realize that your place is not their place? And you might dismiss it as just culture and things that are not necessarily outdated. Grandpa, you say it's Jerome, you're so lame. Great old lame, yeah, lame, whatever. This is whatever, what's your pronoun? Whatever, you know? And you think that they shouldn't speak to you like that. So you assume that they're being offensive. Well, you are being offensive. You are being disingenuous. Who's leading those thoughts? You think those thoughts are coming from God? To have you disrespecting other people? All right, disrespecting nature, disrespecting your creator. Those thoughts are from the enemy. And if you won't recognize them at that point, because you think you're just being cute and standing up for yourself, or being your cool, unique self, later on, like I said, when you get to those places where it's absolute darkness, you're going to be saying, I didn't want this, hallelujah. What am I doing here? I didn't want to be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's serious and a better thing. That's true, man, because hey. if we did it, I watch Whole heap are fighting on the phone. People are fighting. Mm -hmm. You know? Upset with each other and, and you love the fighting. Mm -hmm. Two toes. A situation that will present itself in which you are to fight. <laughs> you see me? <laughs> and you are going to fight. Hey. Because of that you are program yourself with every single day. Mm -hmm. But if you are program yourself with the most high and him words, mm -hmm. they're gonna know say yo. Oh, Slow to, you know, slow right. to anger, yes. you know. Quick, quick to make peace. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Quick to forgive. Yes. So I them think that you got to think about first. Mm -hmm. But if you program by the world, first thing I come upon your mind, thump him in his face, broke him nose, right, knock love. him out. <laughs> yes. One thump, one good thump, knock him out. Yes. Okay, you watch so much fighting, you see yes. a man just one thump yes. and him knock out. So you come with a force there too, you know? Yes, yes. I said, one thump, you know? Yes. And I drop him, drop him, you know? So we're going to say I give a bitch <laughs> lick. <laughs> Our rotten kick. True. Yeah? Because the same way, you did there watch whole heap of road rage events. Yes. After, um, events were recorded on the phone. Mm -hmm. If you end up in one situation, you're going to act the same way like them. <laughs> yes, I. Mm -hmm. Same way, like when you see the road rage events take place. You are go out and I broke people glass and I mash up them window and I cuss at them and I pepper spray them. Mm -hmm. All men are evil. Mm -hmm. But if you're programmed by the most, eh, mm -hmm. you just Hallelujah. say forgive them, Father. Mm -hmm. They know not what they do, mm -hmm. you know? And evil quick for say sorry. You are the yeah. first one to say sorry. Yeah. Please forgive me. Yeah. Turn the other you know, it's my fault. Yes, yes. It's my fault. You know, yes, yes. just peace. A peace you are free. You're not a liar, but you make peace. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You see me? Yes. Quick to make peace and yes. you know, go there with the angry vibes. Yes, yes. You know, forgiveness. Accidents happen. You know, yes. it happens every day. 
you know, quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, daddy, I watch whole heap of naked girl on the phone every single day. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to stop you from seeing this, this girl dress up in similar to this nakedness, you know, see? Mm -hmm. you know in her leggings and mm -hmm. you know, what I call it, gym wear. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I say, yes, this is exactly what I like to see. Yeah. So you're going to check her out now, yes, you know? Yes. And what God say, if you lost after the woman, adultery that yes. in a film side. Yes, hey. Yes. You see me? So God know why we feel a loss off a woman like that. Mm -hmm. But we are loss off of the phone. Mm -hmm. As soon as the girl come and walk mm -hmm. past, we are loss off her and whoa, and I check her out and mm -hmm. whoa, her bottom looks so nice. I you imagine know? all the things. In that leggings, her le that leggings yeah. fit her so good. Yeah. You know? Yes. <laughs> because it's like the culture again, the culture would define you say if you can't appreciate her that way they are that way that you're not man. Or if a woman cannot appreciate a man for his prowess, then she's not a woman. But I will admit that a sexual appreciation of someone is very good. But then, you know, in religious and spiritual culture and experience, it says intimacy is after courtship and commitment, right? So it's not like you don't experience a person sexually, it's just that you have to be committed, you know, after a courtship, yeah? Which is not just a rash decision, that means that if you're not pleased with something, you're just going to throw the person away. There is some safeguard that you would have made a decision that, you know, is worthwhile before, you know, that you, have, you would have processed and thought about that it would have been a worthwhile decision to go ahead before you actually go ahead. So the lust of the world now is telling you the evil, the enemy is saying, that's not important. The courtship not important. Getting to know her is not important. Getting to the sexual experience right away is what's most important. Even undressing her with your eyes hey, is far more important than going through the process and getting the gift of being able to behold her. I don't sensationalize um, women or um, myself as a man, but I do know it's a sacred and spiritual thing. And depending on the level of consciousness, you see it higher or lower. I, I, I am not the heightened kind of person. I am never really am. I am more of a naturalist. I see things as they are biologically and that the biology is the creation based upon the spirit of God. So the creation is biological, that's why we are alive, right? Mm -hmm. We can think all we want, but we are biological beings. So when we have the right function in biology, our thoughts teaches us that there is laws, right? There is structure, you know, there is um, timing, there is a meter to things. So the measure of wanting to unload that strong passion you are supposed to channel it into a person who is worthy of the experience of the passion and not just waste it on everyone. So the bad principle and the bad behavior and the bad influence teaches them to give it up right away, to spread the seed while oats as far as they can, right? And then that teaches you that your generation, that, I mean, that, teaches, that shows you that your generation cannot be harmonized because if you're a father and you have children all over the place, right? You will not have the ability to be a father to all of your children in the manner that they need mentally and psychologically and physically in presence for them to transfer behaviors from you that are beneficial. You have to be there long enough for it to code into the, into the genes for the, for the Y chromosome to activate upon functionality. You know, what we see as our hereditary parental genes do, that's what we do, right? So when we have bad thoughts, bad processes, bad beliefs. The evil thoughts that come into your behavior culturally to say, I have as many children, with as many women. And what it's teaching is irresponsibility. But put irresponsibility over the long run in your reality. And any mature male will tell you what irresponsibility does to their lives. Now, the definition of responsibility might be diverse across the mental patterns of man. But they all can agree that responsibility of some amount of response and ability to functionalities. And that comes through preparation, right? And the ability to mitigate, prepare it, prepare for a situation. When you're in situation, be able to adapt, to mitigate, to be able to make decisions in the, in the midst of conflicts. So responsibility comes with being a father. As we're talking about titles versus actuality in biology, biologically, fathers are real. Fathers is not an opinion. 
not a psychological opinion. Whether you talk about daddy, who's a daddy from who's a father. Father is a biological definition. It's not psychological. A king is not a biological definition. A king is a male. And it's rooted in male, as in biological gender. But it's not rooted in just the biology. It's rooted in the male psyche. A king is a title. So people will kill for kingship, chiefship, chiefdom, queenship, queendom, titles, codified behaviors, ways of thinking. But they will not honor fatherhood. They will not honor motherhood, the act of being a mother, not what type of mother she is, not that she's some goddess, some queen, because a mother is supposed to protect her young and to give care to her offspring. That's mother across all tangent it is a biological offering that involves the breast not a psychological belief of breastfeeding is best it is biological it's the breast that feeds the offspring but you have belief systems that will tell the mother pump your breast milk into a machine they will tell the mother you do not need to breastfeed Lactating mothers don't need to, to breastfeed. They don't need. So you have a psychological a lie. The devil is a liar. That thought is controlling their behaviors. And biology is out the window. There's no respect for fathers, for fatherhood. So there's no true respect for mothers and motherhood. There's a matriarchal philosophy, don't get me wrong, you know. That is not maternal. And there's a patriarchal philosophy that is not paternal. The matriarchal philosophy is matrilineal and the patriarchal philosophy is patrilineal. They have nothing to do with the actuality of fatherhood and motherhood. And that's what we mean by the enemy controlling your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You have all these belief systems that you're fixing the gift of God into. And biology, respect of your parents, of nature, of the animals, of your creator is coded in your genes. And if you just but pay attention, to the righteous way but it's not cool according to who according to who is defining popular culture it's not cool to be righteous it's not cool to talk about jesus christ jesus christ yeshua mashiach hallelujah or whatever name you want to refer to him as yahasha yahusha right it's not cool you got something wrong with you you're trying to mix up people's minds you're bringing some will <laughs> wow you know what i mean but everything else is cool to have mental issues and say that you're another being and another creature, which in biology does not exist. I talked about the horse and the donkey making the mule, and the mule isn't able to, to, to have progeny. The, the mule isn't, has no progeny, because it cannot have children. It's not a biological creation. It's an abomination. But we have people taking abominable views on themselves, body modifying themselves, putting horns on their face, and, and, and they're accepted like she's so out there man like yo dude dude did you tell me dude you rocks man come on dude yo dude yo man come you know what I mean who's controlling your thoughts that's not God <laughs> what does it yeah, I don't need to touch on the spiritual side of things though mm -hmm. that would have warm I'm aware that I know people of God are on this world. Absolutely, hallelujah. If a people of God are on this world, the world would have holy better. Absolutely. But it's written in hallelujah. the Bible. Say a wickedness run this. This world are Satan are on this. Haba, you see me? And a few children are on this. That's why media stays so. The banking system stays so. You know the every culture around the world it run mostly by wickedness yes hallelujah. and if the wickedness are run things then they are going to try to run your mind control your mind so I saw the Bible come in now and the Mosai and taking your way out of for the mind control programming and start reprogram with mine with the most high words and meditate upon it day and night because we have to cleanse out with mine from all of these evil thoughts. Yes. You know, we have evil thoughts against each other, friends of evil thoughts against each other, brothers, 
sisters, mothers, sons, you see me? Evil thoughts against everybody will pop up. Yes. Because of our culture that as so we get programmed. Mm. And as so we have to reprogram ourselves and consciously aware of our mind. Yes, for real. And I say, mind, why are you thinking that negative thing? Yes. Stop it. Hey. More you have to talk to your mind and say, stop that thinking. Because why you think that? You see me? Think positive, man. Take that out of yourself. You see me? Yes. You, have to have repro you have to have reason on yourself and say, no, you have to aware. True, true. Because things cross your mind, you know. And if you don't pay attention, we have to say, no, man. And he even have in mind mm -hmm. the righteousness. Yes. And say, no, man, and a righteous start that. Exactly. Run with that. Yeah, man. But sometimes we don't pick it up. Yeah, for real. And I run with the evil thought. Yes. And I saw the enemy smile. Yes. And as I say, see it then. We catch him with that one, you know. Mm. Yes. But everything else, you don't have peace, you know. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they catch you with that one, they know what tick you off. Yes, I say, ah, oh, see, then we get the anger time now. Yes. Hatred, anger, yes, and feed upon it. Yes. You see real. me? While if we the program with the most and have it at our forefront and meditate upon it day and night, then we're gonna do the right thing. Yes. Cause we know the right thing. Yes. And we'll do it. Yes. No more, Righteousness. No more pretense, yeah. Yes, I. It's a serious thing just like that, like. The comparing will always lead to people either saying that they're better or thinking that they're lesser than you. So that comparative, comparative analysis that is never really of any benefit, leading to jealousy, that's a big gateway of the evil controlling people's thoughts. Are people allowing their thoughts to be overcome by the evil projections? Because here yeah, we know we are in the world, but there's still some autonomy in our human spirit. Where I say, once they have the shield of the Most High, the seal of the Most High got upon them, which is your natural seal, right? And we break the seal by our choices and our behaviors, right? So even a child, like after 12, 13, you will become a little more cognitive as the brain stem develop and become congealed, then behaviors become set. Then you become responsible for your thoughts fully. And your parents will be responsible for your thoughts up until that point. But a lot of people don't understand that, you know, a lot of mental patterns, right? It's because of just, you know, self-hate. And, and you know, because people don't love themselves, and they don't love themselves based upon comparing themselves to others based upon attention. And most times, a child who incurs dark forces, which sets the bad behavior and the wrong pattern of thoughts in, 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 in the mentals, in the mentation, started as a child. Most times, when a child will compare itself to other children, it's like a thing that we find ourselves of adults having to go back in regression therapy to deal with it. Uh, as a child, what we do a lot of times is that we look at our brothers and sisters and we are so um, mathematical and calculating. So it's like, I'm going to use a Jamaican, there's three pieces of food in the plate, right? Three pieces of, you got a piece of yam, banana and dumpling, right? There are three kids, right? But the, the mother, through her preference, might put a little extra piece of dumpling or banana in her plate. And as simple as that is, each child knows whose plate that is in. Mm. Now, if it is interchanging and based upon reward systems of behavior, it is accepted mm. as just being a process of reward, right? Or mm. the lack thereof, right? If you don't get in, it means you weren't good. However, if it is specifically used to reward one child, mm. then it is favoritism. And so favoritism leads in comparison to the child from thenceforth, looking at that brother, that sister, as a threat as one that has more love and affection and hence more approval from their parents and that very sense of comparison is where the wrong thoughts begin to enter because the enemy begins to feed that thought to say see every time she give him four dumplings and give you two every time she put on a little piece of strega strega meat on your plate right every time she's speaking to him, she's calm. Every time she's speaking to you, she's shouting at you. Why is she calm down? Why is she talking to you like she talked to your brother mm. or to your cousin? At, and so you begin to compare. Mm. And so the evil thoughts begin to work the mental patterns. So it begins to set in you. You go to other places and you see it as a pattern. You say they're speaking over your head. They're not addressing you directly, right? And so it becomes a behavioral pattern that if it goes totally bad, you go to places with an egoic mind, 
seeking attention as a, as a young lady, let's say a young lady, you always want every man to think you are the most beautiful, you are the most attractive, you are the most elegant. If you're, a, if you're a young male or a male, you feel that people should think that you are the strongest, the most powerful, the wisest, because these are deficiencies the you would have carried. And the thought process that drives all those activities aren't good, so the outcomes aren't good. At first, you might be seemingly achieving well, but you end up alienating friends, alienating relationships, alienating community members, family members, alienating your work grouping, so you end up alone in places with cold accolades, like a lot of money, a, a nice place, you know, a, a, a fancy award, but nobody to really share it with, right? You're posting a hundred pictures online or videos, but what does that really mean? Where are the people? Where are the friends that added to that experience that you generally are rewarding as you are rewarding yourself? Where are the people that, that added to your, to your cluster? Where is Brother Singh? It's just you, Great Town? Where's the other person? Where are the others who's there that makes this happen? It's just you. And so we get to these places because of wrong thinking. And we say it's all for us. I'm doing this for me, 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 me. And so the me, me, me thought is contrary to we, we, we. We, 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 us, 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 that's God. Because that's the community, that's the family, that's the grouping where two or more are gathered, agreeing on my name, there I shall be also. That's the gathering of the saints, the souls. Yeah, think for the community, think communal, that's godly. The selfish thoughts are projected towards us, go for yourself. You think, okay, it's okay, because in your life, growing up, you were hurt. People left you out. On the ball field, nobody picked you. You were the last to enter the game. On the girls' team, they, they were the last to consider you. They're always trying to make a, a trick with you. They always spoke down to you. It's a belief. It's a belief that codifies and became a behavior. It's an expectation. We take on to ourselves false beliefs. Like it's, it's a form of low lunacy, because you're actually thinking something that isn't actual without reason or cause too. There's no actual causality except an adequacy of thought based upon lies. Thoughts that don't belong to you. You're thinking that this is me thinking about me. But that thought is coming from an entity that don't like you, don't like your sisters, hey, don't like your mother, don't like those other people in the office, don't like anybody, even the ones who are swearing allegiance to that entity. It still don't like them. So it is invested to hurt you, to hurt everything around you, and to confuse you. you, you said it best, the kingdom of this world ain't run by goodness. Hallelujah. <laughs> People follow the leader. <laughs> and everybody wants to be the leader in this corrupt world. Makes me wonder, what kind of leading are they leading? Where are they leading to? I'd rather follow the most because I know where he's going. He says, I go to prepare a place, hallelujah, that where I am, there you shall be also. <laughs> you can quote me for a bit. Huh? So as we're getting ready to get out of here, brothers, in the ultimate memory, we're trying to draw forward in thought is to let people understand that. Search your thought processes, yeah? All of those beliefs and behaviors that you're having, you think that it's all so much your own. Really, truly spend some time to examine them to see where they came from because you'll be so surprised to see others behaving the same way, inspired by the same thoughts, claiming them to be their own. That's why you cannot basically um, patent an idea because others will have the same idea because where it's coming from the same source, you can only patent a, a, a specific um, design. So the essence of it is, is, it's the way it is. You think you're original, but you're not. Okay, you're just a copy of a previous copy of a previous copy that's all acting like a puppet master, you know, fallen seraphim. You ever see? Man, I recall this morning, they are at the gas station, and like many people in there and the place block up. Mm -hmm. And the place start finally free up now. And all this person have to do is just wait so I can just free up myself now. Mm -hmm. But this person just right at the back of the other person. Mm -hmm. You Whoa. know, inching down, not in waiting. Yeah. I'm here, Man, no. I'm here, blow. I said, wait now, wait now. You know, them not pay me no mind, you know. And then me, I get upset and, you know, like I said, Jano, you know, in you know myself. Yeah. Like, me, I shout to them, but them not hear me. Like, I said, Jano, you can't wait for you. Whoa. You know? But me I look at myself and I say, you know, can't make people I try to draw me out like that and I try to get the upset energy out of me and angry and, you know, probably curse them energy, you know? Come mm -hmm. here I say, we have to just aware of ourselves mm -hmm. and catch ourselves. Yes, for real. And if you say next time I'm going to try to do better, your father, forgive me for your shout after the person, you know? Although them should have wait, you know, but me not supposed to get the angry upset, you know, forgive them father, 
moving on. You know, get a peaceful. Me go to back peaceful and have energy after that. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, why money have to do? <laughs> yeah, could have angry all my day come straight to Kingston angry. Yes, hallelujah. But I'm just reason with the father. You know, the so father forgive me, man. You know, I'm peacefully just come in. You know, make that thought they go with you. Cause that's what usually happens. It attaches itself to your embodied and think it's your thought, think it's your dreams, it's your ideas, and you reach it, you're not satisfied. More, you know, the, the most simple way to explain some of this is like the road rage people. They're driving past you at 90 miles per hour, right? And then they go right in front of you and slow down and start driving 35. Where were they trying to get? Just ahead of you. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting it weird. They were getting it weird. But you know, it's a thing, you know. It's a, it's a thing, people. Um, I want to say something off, off, off topically. You see, the beauty about life is that we are going to go through crazy stuff, you know. Nobody's here is untouched or untouchable. Don't become cynical about other people's hurts or their pain. I am not pleased with seeing people transmorph their body image. I don't like speaking the politically correct or trying to correct the politically miscorrect statements. I make reference to it because I want people to understand I love the soul of the living being because I'm a living being myself. But don't push philosophies on me and beliefs. Even though you are pushing them, I apologize for our behavior sometimes. We know people are hurt, but you got to take responsibility also. We can't do this without saying that. You got to take responsibility. You, you think that everything is everybody else's fault, hallelujah. And it's always what was done to you. And so we don't look inside. We don't take self-responsibility. And so we keep believing it's others, others, and who is making us think this way? It's a fallen seraphim that is the master of such a thought. Not to blame the seraphim only because you still have to take responsibility. Tempt you, he can. The final decision is yours. Hallelujah. The final decision is yours. The first and the last decision is yours. It is your choice to serve the living God. It is your choice to be dark and ignorant and whoring. So please understand the law of reality, law of existence. You chose it. So if you want a change of outcomes, change the core principle of your lies. You're acting like the father of lies. Stop lying to yourself. You made that decision. That's why you're right there today. You're trying to draw him, her, them in to be that saving grace that catch at a straw if you were to drown. That's what you're doing. And to stop all of that, you have to take responsibility. The lock for the key around your legs that's holding you in the pond, it, it's in your hands. It's always been in your hands. And when it's not in your hands, you slip it between your butt crack. You've had the key all along to pull the chains that, that's been holding you. It's the right behavior, it's the right thinking. When you come on the path of godliness, no matter how crazy you were, no matter how mental and sick or snorting all the sort of substance and shoot them in the vein and acting all manner of weird sexual lifestyle, when you come into the kingdom, all of that will stop. If you choose for it to stop, you make up your mind to serve God. You can serve God and serve Mammon and serve Lucifer and serve Satan and serve the devil and serve Abacus. You only serve the Most High God with all your heart to have righteous, natural, clean, healthy life. Everything has its season. Fertilization is artificial and artificial is unnatural. God is natural. Artificial is unnatural. So most things that go with all the artificial are so far from natural way of life. All of the modification, all of the weird thinking, to feel yourself better, to feel yourself important, all of those thoughts are the enemy's thoughts. And you went down the rabbit hole, and now you've embodied the thoughts, and you think there's no difference between you and all of your favorite heroes that are dark as hell, evil as, <laughs> crazy as, sadistic as, psychopathic as, sociopathic as. That's what you found out after you're so caught up. And now, where are you gonna run? To the Most High God. Repent, repent, 
change your thinking, change your behaviors, change your life. Brother Singh, before we close. Yeah, we don't just want to say, if we just keep the Mosa in mind. You know, think like, say, what Christ would I do? What the Bible says we have to do? How we have to always pay attention to our thoughts and pay attention when it, it gets out of order and fix it back real quick. You see me? Get back in order in the spirit of Yud Hei Vav Hei, in the power of Yeshua Mashiach, of Nazareth. Love, blessings, and light. Keep on the path of righteousness. Yeah, cast out the enemy out of your thinking processes. Don't let the enemy control your thoughts or interfere with your thoughts to manipulate your life. Until next time, this has been the great out. Reasons right at the your life. Just reminding you to like, share, subscribe the Sila Media Experience right here on Sila Media, the Chair Life Experience on Chair Life Television Network. Keep supporting the Patreon. Get one of those hoodies, one of those blazers, a nice t-shirt to help promote the, the process of our ministry. And also support the wizio.com slash chair life mini healing therapy sessions as well as seeking the divine light within. It's affordable and it's cost effective. It's some great advice which is truly and just continue to support the pages, you know, the different channels and the work we're doing here as you are continuing to support your spiritual community. So in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect. Perfect, Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love.